destination, Giorni. The reason, Petra. Petra is, um, it's one of the world's most unique cities. Um, I say cities, it's an ancient city that was built by a group called the Nabataeans a long, long time ago. For me, the, the interest in going to Petra kind of stems from my love of large European squares. So I've always been a fan of just awe-inspiring, larger-than-life type edifices that uh, were, were built in, a, in an ancient time or a past time. And so that's why Petra really stood out to me because this is a city, an entire city that was built um, by an ancient civilization. Going in February is, um, I think, a good time. It's probably not the, the best time. It does get a little cold there, even though we are in the Middle East, it's a desert. And so in the evenings, it's supposed to get very, very cold. One thing that I really wanna try and do in during this trip to Petra is to be able to highlight uh, the absolute best sights to see. So that maybe for someone who has a day or two there, uh, they could watch this video and see, well, th those are the things I have to see. I understand in, in going to Petra, it's, it's possible to go there and to hire guides and to get into groups. That's not really my style. I tend to be more of an independent traveler. Right now, I'm just getting all my stuff together, all my affairs, um, like normal, like the normal drill. I've got kind of one Osprey bag that I'm putting everything into. I've also put together a, a guidebook. Um, it's actually my own guidebook. I put together using a, a small little soft cover moleskin notebook. In that guidebook, I've got images of all the attractions that I want to see, directions on how to get there, um, as well as just general information about Jordan, about its currency, about my flights and hotels, and I'll just keep it with me. So I also even bought a, a proper guidebook just on Petra that I'll go through and, and read to try and uh, bone up on the historical significance. Honestly, that's not my strength. When I go to do some of these trips, I, I don't really do maybe as much research on like the historical significance behind like the people and their culture. Um, and I probably won't do that very much <laughs> in this trip, but uh, I bought the book and uh, maybe it can help me. Petra uh, was actually voted uh, recently by the folks who I guess determined such things as one of the new seven wonders of the world. Um, as if you need any more incentive to go see it. So looking forward to getting there, uh, looking forward to having you with me on this journey, and uh, I'll try and check in when, uh, whenever I can. So checking in after a successful day at the Rose Red City, Petra. It helps if you can get there early just so that you can avoid the crowds. Even though I'm here in February, the place does fill up and um, especially the really popular areas like the Seek and the Treasury. I'm staying in a place called the Petra Moon Hotel. The Petra Moon Hotel is literally across the street from the uh, entrance to the Petra site attraction. It takes one minute to walk across the street and uh, you're there. The benefits to that are, are that you can get into the park really, really early as soon as it opens. The park opens at 6 a.m. No one is there, No, not even the, the Bedouin local people 
are around at 6 a.m. You can get in there at 6 and literally walk through the seek right to the treasury and have it to yourself. Welcome to the Seek. This is essentially the main entrance and here is enclosed feel that you get um, from like a canyon or a slot canyon. The Seek is this winding like one to two kilometer path that leads into the prime spot of the treasury. And all sorts of people and horses come in and out. And so if you come a little further in, you can just see um, all of the activity that exists here. It's really cool. And um, so the, the Seek has been probably one of my favorite places to see. Most people are in a rush to get through the Seek to get to the treasury, but spending more time here is just impressive when you take a look at the structure and uh, the way that they try and build the water flow. Um, it's, it's something straight out of Southern Utah, to be honest. It looks really, really cool. And I've, I've loved it. The Seek has been actually one of my favorite places to look at and explore. And I would advise you, if you're going through to see the treasury, it'll be there at the end. Um, so take your time and enjoy it here. And you can actually see a little slit of the treasury right at the end of the Seek, which is like the world famous shot, but it's been terrific. One thing that is very much worth noting is that Petra is huge, it's big. Most people when they think about Petra, they probably just imagine the treasury. Nice little surprise at the end. Amazing. I mean, is uh, what kind of all the fuss is about when it comes to Petra. This is the treasury. This is the most famous site in the entire um, city. The the treasury was the most preserved all the edifices here so you can go there and get a really good view of what the, the city was like probably in its prime. So I stay in a hotel that's right across the street so I can get here really really early. The park opens at 6. So when I get here around 6.15 the treasury is totally empty. Right now and later in the day it really gets busy and the guys try and sell you camel rides and donkey rides and it's kind of annoying. But uh, when you get here in the morning it's totally quiet. It's empty and when you look at it, it's just amazing to look at. Um, it's, it's again, it's preserved, it's, it's really, really clean, it's, it's clear. And uh, this square is kind of the cool place to congregate, to appreciate. The treasury is, is obviously and understandably one of the highlights here. It's one of the coolest things to see and uh, should obviously be on your list. And I've loved seeing it. I've spent a lot of time just right here in the square. And we'll probably spend a little more time here just uh, admiring what is honestly one of the coolest things you'll ever see. Um, you could spend days and hours uh, covering all these trails that are some are marked some are unmarked and all of this history that that's there uh, a good example of that is just walking all the way to Adir or Adir the monastery which is at one end of the park and the monastery as we talked about is one of the biggest 
edifice is there, and it's so impressive. So at the top of a pretty strenuous hike, we have the monastery, which is uh, a lot bigger than the treasury, and it actually resembles it. These are two of the most preserved edifices in all of Petra. It's really cool to look at, um, and it's tough getting up here too. The official name is called Adir, and it's at the very back of Petra, but it was sweet getting up here, and uh, just, you can see those little specks of people, just to give you scale of how massive this thing is. It's huge, it's three times bigger than the treasury. Not too bad, um, and again, pretty well preserved. This is definitely worth seeing if you come up here, and it's worth uh, prepping yourself by trying to climb a mountain before, because it's a pretty brutal hike, but uh, you'll make it through it, and this view makes it worth it. I'm pretty much at the end of one side of Petra. That's pretty much as far as you can get from the entrance, so I gotta climb all the way down, um, down the, uh, the hill I came up to see uh, and make my way up to the entrance so I'll see the treasury. And on the way, it's, I mean, if you're going to spend one sp spot, I mean, if you're going to take a group to see one area in Petra, it probably is a treasury, but there's really so much more to see if you just get past the treasury and explore some of these other areas. And that's one thing that I recommend if someone is going to Petra that they definitely do. These are spots in the park that are terrific, that require uh, time, that de and they deserve your attention. So it's worth spending a little more time uh, and realizing that Petra uh, is not just the treasury. There's so much more than that. The high place of sacrifice. High Place of Sacrifice is one of the most popular um, hikes in the entire park. And so in walking up there, the hike wasn't too bad. You hike up this winding uh, set of stairs, kind of go up, up and up, and uh, finally make it to uh, the High Place of Sacrifice, which has some real cultural significance. And I thought it was uh, cool. It was a nice area getting to the top, provided a nice view. Um, honestly, given how much I'd heard about it uh, versus what it was, I think my expectations uh, exceeded the, the reality of, of how neat it was, but it was, it was cool being there nonetheless. What was really, really neat is that the path to the high place of sacrifice led us really close to another trail, and this trail was called Wadi El Farasa, uh, which was neat. It took us kind of a back way through, um, through Petra to see some of these tombs that are built into the mountain. And one of them was called the Garden Tomb and, and all these other tombs. And, and why probably I like the, this, this trail so much is that it provided you with excellent sites um, where you were completely on your own. And it also kind of brings you uh, by where the, the, the Bedouin people who actually live in the park, uh, you can see their accommodation of where they live. And it provided us with with more really cool and unique views. Took us kind of around a mountain area and uh, provided, again, more just really breathtaking panoramic views to see some of these tombs that are built into the mountain. Now, these aren't the royal tombs. The royal tombs are, are terrific and, and are very um, imposing on the main road as you kind of go through 
the main Petra site past the treasury. Unlike places like the treasury or the monastery or other of the really famous um, edifices here in Petra, the inside is kind of disappointing. As, as impressive as they are on the outside, the inside there's not much there. Um, but going into the royal tombs is still uh, neat and the interiors of the royal tombs I was impressed by and I thought were pretty cool. So the royal tombs were definitely um, on, on the list to, to see and do and really um, provide you with kind of a, uh, a break from just the nice exteriors because you can actually go inside there and, um, and, and, and observe what it was like on the inside of these really uh, royal tombs. So, uh, after having just completed the Al Kabutha Trail, uh, I'm from butchering that, uh, Al Kabutha, I think it's what it's called. It's the famous trail that gives you that aerial view down on the treasury. After just completing it, I can give it a hearty endorsement. It's awesome. Uh, it starts with an ascent right next to the royal tomb, so you get a really good shot of both of those royal tombs. But you go up, and I actually climbed this this ascent. Uh, I was on my own. Pretty steep, pretty long, about 45 minutes long. But once you make it to the top, you have three great panoramics. One of the amphitheater, where you can look down and, and see it. One of the city center, Wadi Moza, Musa, and then the shot of the treasury that everyone goes to right on the edge. There's a, a little hut there with pillows, and you can go there and, and sit and, and just literally have your feet hang off the edge, which is what I did, and go down and look at the treasury, which is really, really uh, neat. You're right there, and you have a really neat view, a bird's eye view. Totally thought it was awesome, and that view is spectacular. right now is right in front of the entrance uh, to Petra, the park, the one of the seven wonders of the world. And I've just concluded three incredible days in the park with more memories and more jaw-dropping moments than I can really count. So Petra by night is gorgeous. It's this lit candlelight through the sea. to the treasury that's all lit by these candles and you just sit there and observe um, that's really all you can do at Petra by night it's it's nice uh, but obviously coming here in the daytime gives you more to do and to look at and to appreciate but it was a great way to end the trip buy a ticket and go see Petra by night because it's it's beautiful but make sure you spend a day here uh, at least to see the other sites because they warrant your attention as well it's really hard to, to put into words how beautiful these sites are. I'll try and, I've tried to take video, I've tried to take pictures, and um, I think they look great. But until you're here, you can't really appreciate just how beautiful this place is. And again, Petra is more than just the Sikh leading to the treasury. That's what everyone thinks it is. But it's a huge city. It's, it's, it can't be explored in just one day. And so coming here for multiple days was, was great for me. So to put a bow on it, Petra, amazing. Caden, very satisfied, very content, uh, having visited the country of Jordan, and um, give it my huge thumbs up in terms of coming here. So with that, I, I say goodbye, I sign off, and uh, until the next time. Thank you.